always hits record and I just am talking shit about people. Yeah. It's fine. But it was still nice guy. Well, I'm, I'm sure, but that's also, tired. that's also like. I'm very bad at going like, hey, I just need to, I probably should only do one of these two hours. Exactly. But, and here's the thing is that that guy did not that he didn't deserve necessarily your time like that, but he kind of didn't like you had no obligation like we, to no, do I, that. I, I don't know. We, I mean, we like we've hung out in past trips and like, I, oh, okay. So it, you so, knew so, him. Yeah, it's not like, yeah, it's like it, he wasn't I, like a complete stranger. No, no, no. no. Okay. He's, like, he's someone I've drunk with and hung out. Oh, with. Like, okay. It's, so it's like, I, I was happy to do the show, but I probably should have gone like, Hey, I should probably only do an hour. We have to establish boundaries right. in this industry. Otherwise we will get full taken advantage of. <laughs> but it's hard. I understand. We want to work. So I'm it's a like pleaser. I'm do, we're pleasers, and we want to we want to work. And it's like, who do I say no to? And then it's like yeah. that one person that we say no to and is going to be doing my boss radio at some and point. I enjoy doing podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Okay, guys, let's get into it. Welcome back to the struggle with Candace Thompson. I am Candace Thompson. Um, for my new listeners who are joining, the struggle is a podcast where I invite my friends on. Um, usually comedians, not all the time, uh, but we like to talk about the challenges of adulting and. We laugh about it. So if you're struggling with something and maybe something that we re- that we talk about on the podcast and you can relate to it, then that's the job here. That's what we do. Um, to my loyal I, listeners, what? I didn't know that we were going to laugh about it. Uh, I brought in all the struggles I brought in are genocide-based. <laughs> so <laughs> did I do it wrong? I mean, who says we can't laugh at genocide? Yeah, I've been taking like you're a couple of free history cl- courses like online and... <laughs> Like See her struggle. I'm like, well, do I have a struggle for you? <laughs> and now I'm. Let's talk now about I'm persecution. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, we could find some. We're comics. We can find funny in most. Right. The darkest of things. Let's get canceled. It's part of the healing <laughs> process, right? Is getting canceled. Um, I want to talk to you about. You know about the Ari Shafir thing, right? Yeah, I saw it sort of half play out. I, let, let, I want to talk about it, but put a pin in that. Okay. <laughs> put a pin in that. Cause I'm curious on your thoughts on that. But anyway. Um, where was I? Oh, loyal listeners, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you. If you have not subscribed to The Struggle, make sure you do that. We're on all podcast platforms. We are on iTunes. Please rate and review there. We're on YouTube. Subscribe there. And if you haven't told somebody about The Struggle and you're listening regularly, do us a solid. Pay it forward. You can find me at Jokes by Candice on social media, CandiceThompsonComedy.com for my shows, which I rarely update. And now I'm going to introduce my hilarious guest for the day, Matt Kirshen. Hey, Candice. Oh, my God. You're my, uh, you're my first British guest. I am honored. It's a true pleasure to represent my entire nation. <laughs> and for many of your listeners, th- this might be the first British voice they've ever heard. Ever. Yeah. I keep saying my listeners are very stupid and very <laughs> sheltered. Right. This is because your podcast is the first sound they've ever heard. Correct. And the only thing they know about the world. That is correct. <laughs> this is where they come for all their news. Which does sort of, I mean, it does ask the question, like, how do they know words and understand what you're saying? But... You know, they've worked it out from context Some of them clues. are autodidactic, um, yep. and they don't know what that means. <laughs> 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 but they are. Um, but no, <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming. Where can people find you on social media? Oh, uh, Matt Kirshen on most of the things. And if you don't know how to spell that, just type English comedian Matt K I and stop banging the keyboard, and Google will find me because <laughs> it's a weird name, and not many people have it. It's such a it's not weird. It, I wouldn't say weird because weird makes it sound like it's bad, but, no, but it's it, more it's, unique. It's I have a never rare met name, another Kirshen before. Th- there's a couple knocking around. I, they occasionally I see them popping up on yeah, Google yeah. searches or Twitter, but yeah, it was Kirschenbaum. That's what it was originally. Kirschenbaum, which is German for cherry tree. It's a German Jewish name. That's beautiful. And then my great grandparents it changed it to just. Kirschen. Kirschen, yeah. So is it is it Kirschen is still or Kirschen now? Because no, everyone k- calls you. I've heard Kirschen. No, no, Kirschen is how, okay. I, how my family pronounced. Yeah, they okay. they also changed the spelling. They dropped. It's yeah. so complicated. There, there was and also my my grandfather and his two brothers spelled it differently as well, so they couldn't even agree on it. They were like, let's just <laughs> flip so, a coin. I don't know. Let's do the. I I like personally it's just too many syllables. It's it's a lot. I personally think as a stage name, you should have just done Matt Cherry Tree. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's, that's very memorable. <laughs> Get some of that Native American money in there. <laughs> <laughs> some of that George Washington. Didn't he allegedly chop down a cherry tree? Isn't that what it was? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that well, means. Well, it was. Well, I shouldn't know. Th- but yeah, and then he was unable to lie about it. Yes. I don't even remember the point of that story. Was it ju- they just told us about? I think the point is that he's too stupid to lie. To lie. 
Yeah, it's I a mean, story about how George Washington is really dumb. Yeah, because the most successful people in the world yeah. lie. They get there by lying. Unless he lied about the whole story. <laughs> in which case, this may that's not have super smart. Ever happened, and we're still talking about it. So it's imagine, brilliant. Imagine if you found out later that cherry trees didn't even reach it, America until like the 1900s, and you're like, holy we've fuck, we've been completely bamboozled. Have you ever seen a cherry tree? I've never physically seen a cherry tree. N- I, you know what? I don't know if I have, but I presume they exist because I've seen cherries. Yeah, I eat cherries. It's my favorite fruit. And I've also seen trees. And, and I've, I've seen trees. I've put the two ideas together in my head and got a vague idea of what they might look it could like. Work. But... <laughs> You yeah, know, I think they're just maybe regionally like Washington, and how often am I there? Well, and they must be somewhere in Europe, because otherwise that wouldn't be A my name. A thing for you. Yep. You're right. Look at that, guys. This is the, mo- the most educational podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Genealogy <laughs> with Candace. <laughs> I don't know what learning the history of fruit is either, <laughs> but that's we do that here, too. Um, <laughs> so stupid. I do like to say, I like to talk about the, how I met my guests, and I don't remember the first time we met, but I do remember, and you know what I'm going to say here. I do. I think we, <laughs> I think we first met at a show at Bar Lubitsch, is my, I, I that's think. Probably, I mean, that sounds right. But I do know exactly the story you're about to tell. Yeah, that, <laughs> our, our origin story. Because yeah. what, what was funny wasn't what you did, but just how embarrassed you were. My by, reaction to it. Because. You didn't care. I did. Not only did I not care, but I didn't even get the reference <laughs> oh. until subs- Did I not tell you that? Because it, I don't think I knew that part. So the first thing you have to know is that SNL has only occasionally been broadcast in the UK. It's only so. Oh. Yeah, SNL. Um, it's not really a thing there. No, it is increasingly now because of the internet. So the various things that they put on YouTube go viral worldwide. Yeah. And also characters and performers on SNL who have subsequently gone on to films. Yeah. So, for example, I, I didn't know, and I think this is true, I think I might have had an inkling just because I was a comedy nerd, mm-hmm. but I didn't really know that Wayne's World or Coneheads or Blues Brothers or any any of these things came from came from SNL. SNL. I had no idea, really. I think I, half knew, I think I half knew that Wayne's World was a sketch on this show that yeah, I half yeah. knew about, but... Yeah. I would say most Brits who watched Wayne's World just thought and it was Wayne's World 2 just thought, thought it was, was a just, one-off. Thought it was a film. It's yeah, a these two movie. guys created these characters. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no idea. That's great. So, <laughs> I never knew that. <laughs> and there is another Mike Myers character. That is correct. Called, well, and here's the thing that I, okay, so I'll tell you what happened and then I'll tell you what I just learned about that character. So we're standing out. It was me. Who was I? Do you remember who I was talking to I outside? don't remember, but I remember it was outside the improv. It was outside the improv. We were standing on the sidewalk and I forget who, it was another comedian. I'm outside and I think there was maybe two other comedians I'm outside talking and I don't know why, but for some reason I started doing an impression of Mike Myers' character on SNL, uh, a British, little British boy named Simon who would be in a tub and he'd draw, draw he had a little sketch pad and he would sing a song where, hello, my name is Simon, and I like to do drawing. Oh. <laughs> and as soon as I said that. She, you sort of turned around and just came face to face with me. <laughs> and what's funny is it's not offensive at all, really. No. But it was, it was honestly as if you just sort of came face to face with an Asian person after doing like a sort of... Ching chong. Yeah, right. like 40s, like... For sure. Doing have the like eyes and everything. Chicklets like, in my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... Pulling my eyes back. It was that because it sounded like I was mocking you. And, right. and that's that's just basically... And I was like, of all the times to walk by me when I'm doing this really bad British... Well, hello, my name is Simon. You went... <laughs> you went so red. I was like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> so I felt really stupid, but I knew I knew like I was like there's nothing really to be inf- be offended by. But no, at the same time, it was like sh- I got caught doing something really bad. It really was very funny, <laughs> like, it was just, and that's our origin story. Your, it really is. <laughs> but yeah, your horror, your absolute horror, <laughs> just I mean, just like oh. it looked. It looked as if you thought you sort of conjured me. <laughs> what, that sucks. You'd somehow accidentally summoned me. You know that if you say that theme song three times in front of a mirror, a British person will, will appear. Will appear, and I am the nearest and British <laughs> person to the improv at most given times. Now, what I I knew, but I think I guess had just compartmentalized it, was that this was an actual character. Like, 
there was a character, a real show about this boy, Simon, who was British in a tub and would draw stuff. And right. that's where Mike Myers got that from. Right. Was from the, he, it was the exact same bit. Because he grew up in, he grew up partly in Scotland, I think. I think so, yes. He's got British parents. So, and that would make sense why he knew this character, but apparently he just lifted that character. Like was, And I hear he's done that a few times with, he's like, adapted or in like or not really adapted but just absorbed characters right. that he had seen but it wasn't then. like a comedy character that he lifted it was like a real no, kid that was show a that real... he was doing an impression yeah of and i remember that show like i i think that's why i remembered that <laughs> bit is because i remembered being like oh i re think i remember that from when i was a baby or some shit uh, i don't but i knew it and it just resonated with me and i don't again i don't know why i was <laughs> singing it outside the improv <laughs> But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and yep. here we are. We've come so far. <laughs> we really have. Look at us now. <laughs> Meeting as friends, no longer enemies. Yeah, no <laughs> mortal en enemies. My friend, uh, Joyelle, you, we were together last week. We met up and had uh, a drink. Yep. Where where were we? Highland Park? Uh, we yes. Supposed to, you invited us to go bowling. We were going to go bowling, but it turns out that that bowling alley is much more popular on a Sunday than we were expecting. Yeah. So, like, we could get you a lane for, like, 4.55, but also we have a private party coming in at 5, so, That's so how does that work LA. for you? Yeah. What are we talking about? <laughs> I've never been bowling in any other place, but any it, other city where it's like, you can't, you need to, why, did you call? Is your name on the list? Yeah. Well, what are we talking about? Although, to be fair, it is a, it is a smaller bowling alley. It's a more it intimate. Like a little hipstery thing rather than just like a... Okay, like 45 lanes. It's not like, yeah, 45 lanes and then claw machines and everything. Right. But it's still obnoxious. It, <laughs> it's still the fact that that this many people want to go bowling, that I can't go bowling just but, on but, a whim. But also we should have gone like, oh, maybe we should book rather than just rocking up That is true. willy-nilly. The cockiness. You know, know, just the arrogance. They'll find space for us. Look at us. <laughs> <laughs> I was just at the cellar in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> they know uh, about You me. might have seen this face on Comics Unleashed. <laughs> on late night syndicated TV. Did you really do Comics Unleashed? Yeah, everyone's done Comics Unleashed. I didn't. They wouldn't I let me. What? I've dealt with so much bullshit. But can I tell you the one time that I was approached about doing Comics Unleashed uh -huh. was only because, only because there was a, and I, they didn't tell me who it was. So you know the booker, Eric? Yeah. He contacted me, and I had been referred to him on numerous occasions, and he would never book me. This one time he calls and tells me that they have a black female who's doing the show, uh -huh. but she's sick and she might not be able to make it. Would you be on deck? To be a to be the black woman that comes on the show, if she can't make it, and I don't know who it was, and she was able to do it, so it was fine. And I think it was Jeannie Ashere, okay. another Brit, right? So maybe I should have also got that call. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, we might we be can't find a black a woman, but we can find a Brit. <laughs> they should same have, thing. They should have brought us on together to like collectively. Oh, we replace. sit in the same chair. Yeah, you just on my lap. Somewhere between the two of us <laughs> is Gina. Is Gina. Um. <laughs> How were the and so yeah I was I was so insulted by that I'm like first oh, of fair all enough. first of all like you can have it's not like there's just one slot to fill like mm -hmm. you can't it's not like you just have the quota we need to have one black woman per per episode like you can have two sometimes you you know it's it, we don't have the same voice whatsoever but I was just like how dare you and then never called me again to even do it on another show okay so that's my beef with that show fair enough yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I That's your everybody. very specific struggle That's with that very struggle. specific show. That was my struggle with that show. No, but oh, I will get to my struggle. I guess I can do that. Mine's a silly physical struggle. It's not silly because it really is getting on my nerves now, but I have TMJ. What? What is that? It's my jaw. Temporomandibular joint, I think is what it is. So like oh, is my that jaw right? pops. Oh, uh, I, I had that for a bit. It went away? Yeah, and like a dentist told me, I think there are like sort of jaw exercises you can kind of do. I the, massage the look, over here, the muscle. Yeah, and also like moving around, kind of like that. Uh, uh, yeah, you look ridiculous. I wouldn't do it in public, but do it straight into the camera. What's wrong, guys? I'm just trying to massage my temporal mandibular. Hey, so have you been on many Tinder dates? Because this is one of my first. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep doing this. For <laughs> <laughs> but it's it. Mine is getting worse as I get older. I even have a mouth guard. Okay. Yeah, I'm a. Um, I sleep. It looks like a retainer. It looks like Invisalign. Except okay, so it's worse. not too. Okay. Except worse, like because it it protrudes. At, it makes my lip 
pop out a little bit. Right. So it looks like I have a, a guard, you know, like when the MMA. Right, yeah, like you're about to box or something yeah. or play rugby. So not sexy at all, uh-huh. which is fine because I'm not seeing anybody. <laughs> so I can be as ugly as I want when I go to bed. But, yeah, no, it's just it's getting to the point where, you know, it locks sometimes and, like, stuff that I eat, if it's crunchy, they tell you stuff that you shouldn't, you should avoid. And it's like, that's all the foods. It's like, right. they can't, you can't do chewy, you can't do crunchy. Don't do any food with any texture or <laughs> pressure. Or... So I'm just going to eat applesauce <laughs> for the rest of my life. Perfect. Sounds good. You're just bringing your blender out to restaurants? Yes, because that's, I'm essentially just, just out of a straw is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. Right. So uh, it's just annoying. And, they, and the mouth guard, I want to complain about the mouth guard here for a second because it costs $500. What? This thing costs five hundred dollars. I got it from my dentist, and it's a personalized. Like you can get cheap ones on like Amazon that I will probably do the job. They personalized look like, as in like monogram. It like <laughs> yeah, my, no, it does have my name on it. All right. Misspelled, I will say. <laughs> I'm like, if you guys are making something permanent, you know, you get mad when someone's just making a flyer for a right. show and they misspell your name. You're like, you got just the minimal amount of effort to Google somebody's name. Uh-huh. Like you follow me on Instagram, you sent me an email for the show, just. Double check before you post the flyer. So, so it this was like thing. An IA switch up? No, they misspelled my last name. Wow. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, I can see. <laughs> I can see, like, P's or no P or no P. I could see that, but no. <laughs> Do they call you, like, no. Candace Bompson or something? Like, what are we dealing with? It's just as ignorant. Like, okay, okay so they abbreviated my first name, so it's just C. Okay. I should have brought it with me to show you guys. It's just, it's disgusting. I, just a C, period, and then T H O M. S U N. So they left out the P and then the O they made into a U. So they've kind of like Scandinavian it? Yes. <laughs> Thompson. Thomason. <laughs> I was like, you guys have a file. You have my file. I am Candace Thomason. I am good at skiing. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> Put that in my file, because this is ridiculous. Yeah, no, I was like, you had reference. So you're putting in all this effort to make sure that it fits, like you got a mold and everything for my teeth, and then you fuck up that. But I would like to say I'm pissed because I've spent $500 on this thing, and I feel like it's not helping one bit. Oh, no? No. So anyone who's out there who has TMJ, I don't know if I'm a special case, and maybe it does help. And maybe it helps a little bit, but it still hurts. And I'm just like, I don't know what to do at this point. I don't know. Do I have to get my jaw broken and then realigned? I have no idea. But I feel like it's just going to get worse. Uh, I've been know. in uh, sex situations. <laughs> jaw just locks up. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's It's hot. bad. So, yeah. You I'm have just, to, like, tap out? Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. I have to take a break. Excuse right. me. I have to go massage my jaw. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. I have to go make some hot tea. I'll be back <laughs> Pleasure, your, pleasure yourself for the next 45 minutes. I have to take, yeah, it's it's bad. And so I don't know what to do, but it's really, and in the morning it's bad. And then I would, I'm thinking about it right now because I just ate some chewy stuff and it's bothering me again. Uh. So that's my struggle for the week. I'm sorry. You don't have any physical ailments? Oh, plenty. Like what? Uh... Well, uh, allergies for starters. Oh, you did come in here. I did come in here nose. going like, "Oh, I'm allergic." Yeah. Wait. What is it to? Is it to like pollen? Oh, about, okay. So I, I, I had a, uh, I actually had a test recently. So you take take tests? Oh yeah, you can. Uh, Allergy tests? Totally. Yeah, you got. So my my uh, I had my annual physical about I don't know how many months ago. Mm-hmm. And You're I have such an adult, right? And I have. Well, you've got your health insurance I now, do. haven't I you? Just don't go though. I don't do. I mean, I usually go to the doctor. Something's bothering me. You should have your your fancy TV right to health insurance should have kicked in. Oh by yeah, now. no. Oh for sure it has. I just don't. Uh, I've always had health insurance. Like right. that's one thing I don't fuck around with. But it's just I'll go when I have something wrong with me. Like there's certain things I'll do annually, like my gynecologist check. I'll make sure I do that. But uh-huh. like phys- just going to get a physical. I'm just a generally like a healthy person. I eat so healthily and I exercise all the time. So it's so like, you're like, I'm good. I'm fine. Unless something's bothering me. Like I have like an it's infection, fine. like a sinus infection or something like that. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. So I asked my doctor because I've never got this properly tested because I have certain, like I can't eat certain nuts, but it's not an anaphylactic thing. Like I, peanuts, no. Yeah. Peanuts and also cashews, which are not the same thing at all, but it just messes up my stomach. Yeah. So... And that's because of an allergy? You no, no, that's an intolerance, just... which is different. But mm. I asked the doctor about that because it, it's different mechanism. And then, but also I have, like, I've always had like some allergy, like hay fever and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So she went, well, why don't I just send you to the allergist and you can do a full test? Yeah. And the way it works is they, they divide up either your arm or my one did the back, mm-hmm. and they they divide the whole thing up into grids. This is already so much. Oh yeah, it's a lot. So you also have this list of things you can't take. 
in the run up to it. Like you can't take for like a day before or like no, a like week. a week or so. Like you oh, can't wow. take. Well, they have to actually different. They're like <clears throat> two days before you can't take this, a week before you can't take this, two weeks before you can't take this, or there's like you can't have certain cereal bars. You can't take ibuprofen because it'll affect whether or not things react. Yeah. Uh, you can't take antihistamines because the whole thing is testing for histamines. Yeah, so yeah, it's like yeah. it, it would negate it. Right. And then they divide your back up into a grid. And they they basically, like, in each of the grids, they've got, like, this... Th- they don't think they do, like, a bunch at a time. But they have this little plastic thing <laughs> with lots of pins dipped in different allergens. And then they stick you with it? And they stick you with it. It's like... It, I mean, it's not, like, a deep stick. It's, just like, barely goes... Like acupuncture. Yeah, well, not even... It barely goes below the surface. It's almost like a little scratch. You barely feel it. It's, like, okay. sort of... Uh, and if you react to it. Yeah, it almost feels like... You know, you know the sort of... You know, if you buy electronics sometimes and the... The plug, so the plug has like a little plastic guard yeah, over the yeah, top yeah. of it. Yeah, they look like that. It's if it's as if you just press that plastic guard into your skin. Oh, okay, that's not. So it feels like it feels like that. It's just like weird, yeah, a bit scratchy. I might go get this done when I leave here. Right, and then they sort of leave you like listening to a podcast for twenty five minutes uh-huh. or whatever, and then they come back and and the nurse was like, "Oh, it's a party on your back," meaning you're allergic. Like to Like a it. load of things flashed up. Like they do like foods and also they do environmental stuff. So there's a bunch of foods I can't, uh, like, things I didn't know, like, uh, like sesame oil or sesame, apparently. Uh, there were some other oils. I can't remember. I've got to look at the charts. And then and then animals, like uh, cats, I'm generally so allergic to. you can't to. eat those. Right, can't eat those. <laughs> uh, goats. Goats? You're allergic to goats? Yeah, so there goes that dream. Oh, no. They're so baby goats. They're so cute. You apparently. can't do goat yoga now. I, I have up. done goat yoga. <gasps> Did I, you have a reaction? I don't know, because also it's I we're outdoors, so I I don't know. You, oh. it, you could have had a mild reaction. I mean, I like, oh, this mi- pollen or but this But also, grass. you're not really petting the goat. You're just sort of standing there while it uses you as a platform. Right. Have you ever done goat no, yoga? No, I want to, though, it's because I just love goats. Straight up one of the dumbest things, but it is really fun. Oh, well, that's why. I didn't think <laughs> it serves any purpose aside from oh. animals just being therapeutic because they're adorable. Yeah, there's there's zero, although it is a bit of a massage. Like, because their, oh, hooves, their, their hooves, hooves are kind of like digging into your back a bit. Yeah. No. I, where did you do this? Just Griffith Park. I think they it have was. it there. Yeah. It was like we just rock up and give them. I can't remember how much it was. It wasn't very much either. It was like twenty bucks or something. Maybe not even. I'm gonna look into this. Um, I think it started. It was in the summer. They they did it monthly, and you just show up with your yoga mat and a goat. Yeah. B Y O G. And I don't have a goat. Little tip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You didn't bring a goat to goat yoga? What kind of, like, <laughs> entitled <laughs> bullshit? <laughs> oh, do you Lola, guys supply Lola the goats? Miss, or everything has to... to be done for her. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you, you sort of, yeah, you show up, and then the, you sort of, in when you're in certain poses, they'll go around the goat and then just let the goat jump on your back and stand there for a bit. Yeah, yeah, no, I would try that. It's, it's really stupid. But I it's believe fun. you that it's stupid, for sure. I never thought there was anything to it aside from, oh, I yeah. just want to go play with goats. Uh, but we do now have a cat, uh, an accidental cat. Oh yeah, you told yes. Tell the story again because I think this is funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... which I think is also like a mini struggle because this cat is a bit of a nightmare. But but <sighs> yes, I please. but I do also now know that I'm not allergic specifically to that cat because I went back to the allergist because I told and... him about it, mm-hmm. and he was like the they were like you can take a sample of his fur and dander. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So I took some of. I, so you just took some out, or little, some that was already shed? No, we had to like pull it out. Had to well, no, uh, cut, cut it. Like pulling would hurt him. So yeah. we like gave him a little like you sort of scratch his back a bit just to sort of get get some to fall off. Yeah, get the dander up and stuff, and then you sort of snip off a little bit of the fur. <laughs> and then I took it to the allergist, and they made up a specific one-off allergy test for this specific just cat. for this specific cat. Because the general one, I'm allergic to cats in general. But not this one. But not this one. And I don't know whether it's because this cat just doesn't have whatever allergens set me off. Or whether this cat's specific allergen I have got used to over the last month. Because it's been living with you. Right, right. and I have developed a tolerance yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to whatever signature allergens or whatever this, this guy has. But um, The good news is you're not allergic, but the bad news is you hate this cat. No, wait, so tell me. I mean, I hate and love. This is it's an abusive cat. Just for reference, I love this cat, and <laughs> my fiancé loves this cat. But also, <laughs> we did have a friend a comedy friend cat sit cat and hot and house sit for us when we were out of town for a few weeks yeah. over christmas and new year and uh he did say to a mutual friend uh yeah don't tell matt but his cat's a psycho because okay well here's the deal right please tell how you got the cat and then we'll 
I, and also, like, I'm about to describe behaviors that anyone who has a cat will just go like, no, that's just what cats are. But they're sociopaths, which is what I've already believed. Right. Anyway, so we, I, I'm not a cat person. Me neither. Uh, Holly, my fiance, had a cat that died, like, old age, about half a year before we started dating. How do you know how old the cat was? I don't know, but like, well into the teens. So, he, like, it was time. Had a lo- had a long had life, a good but life. still, you know, still obviously sad. Right. But uh, she's very much an animal and pet person. Although we'd much, she's much more of a dog person. But we can't have a dog in our apartment building because the landlord doesn't let it. And also, just she doesn't want like a little pocket dog. And our it's just the apartment's too small for a, for to have a like big a, right. for like a reasonable sized dog. Right. I get it. So, but you know, she she loves animals. I've never had cats or dogs. My uh, I didn't. Grow, I grew up with, like rabbits and hamsters occasionally, but see, I've had no. I've never had a desire for those, and I like tiny. Like, like it would make sense that I would want something like a rabbit because it's just I could carry it with me and just you know snuggle yeah. with it. But for some reason, I've never been. I've always just been a dog person. Right. Yeah. Oof. Or a uh, goat. Right. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> you done rabbit yogurt tool? Why are the goats the an- the go to? Did they? Do you think they want this? Do I they have a? I don't is know. There no I other think it animal? might be because of their natural climbing instinct. They do be climbing. Have you ever seen those? Have you seen those photos? Will you ever Google goats in trees or on, and on oh, mountains? Oh yeah, they be. And it's like how? Yeah, is this Photoshop? They're remarkable because they don't have claws or fingers or any kind of like. How it's do you? Kind of freakish. How do you manage to balance on a branch? Get up there. It, they're and remarkable. And you never see them in pro- in the process. You just see them when they're there. Yeah. <laughs> you see them when they've executed the climb. Have and you're you like, How always the been there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they have climbing gear, they just put on the harness and the <laughs> uh, the ropes. Like, are you? Or they, no, they free solo. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah they're just they're being lowered from a hot air balloon without you noticing. <laughs> you're just busy looking at the goats on the ground, and then you suddenly go like, how did he get up there? Yeah, or you're, you see David Blaine over there. You're like, I yeah. knew it, uh, you son you're... of a bitch. No. <laughs> When's the special coming out? When Your is goat the special? special. So stupid. I'm sorry, continue. Um... So our friend Trish phoned up one night. Uh, it was around, I don't know, it was around like 9, 10 in the evening. You know, you've met Trish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said, uh, there is a cat in the alleyway near where I live in Highland Park. And the alleyway is always full of coyotes. And so I went to shoo this little kitten away from the coyote alley. And he just ran up and jumped in my arms and started purring, which is one of his tricks. We have subsequently He's discovered. He's a sociopath. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coyote Alley. I love that it has a name. Coyote Alley. Yeah, I mean, it's basically yeah. It's like <laughs> that, it's Coyote that. Ugly, and then there's Coyote Alley. Right. It's in the same spot, same block. Yeah. It's just a lot of thing, like <laughs> wild animals that will murder cats and women dancing on bars. It's the two. It's the two things that happen in that area, and and Trish was just driving home through there, and saw this cat, and so he jumped up and jumped in her arms and like sort of acted all like, okay, this belongs, this cat belongs to someone because he's too, he's too like, he's too friendly yeah. to and and too comfortable around humans People. to be a pure feral cat. Right. So she's like, all right, we'll look after him until, uh, until the morning when the shelters are open, we can find out who he belongs to. Yeah. But she so she called around and no one picked up the phone except us. So like we were the first one to pick up the phone. And she's like, can you just look after him overnight? I'll bring some food and a litter tray. And can you just hold on to him? And we were like, okay, all right, we'll deal with him overnight. Yeah. And then... You guys are so nice. I'm just trying to even think of what I would have done if she had called me. Not that she even has my phone number. Yeah. But if she did, I'm just trying to think that conversation. Oh, and it's worth pointing out as well, because, yeah, other people have said, well, like, why didn't she look after it? She has, like, a pit bull that would... That would have been worse than the coyotes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wouldn't, even be pl- wouldn't even be trying to kill the cat, but would yeah. just accidentally just... Yeah. Oh, this is a toy, and, and I'm just gonna... now this toy's moving less than yeah. it was before. So... <laughs> <laughs> Nature, yo. <laughs> uh, so she, uh, so yeah, we we took in a cat overnight, and then the next day, uh, got him scanned, no chip, checked all of like nextdoor dot com, yeah. like the Facebook neighborhood groups, yeah. the specific missing pet groups. Trish put up posts herself in all of those groups. Yeah, like no responses, no, response. no signs. What we think probably happened was a cat had a litter. The, they looked after him while he was a kitten, yeah. and then he started to get a bit hungrier and a bit needier, and then they just like, left the back door open, is my guess. Mm. So, now we have a cat. Now you have a cat. Yeah, I was like watching this thing going like, oh, Holly's bonded with him already. <laughs> <laughs> I 
they've and imprinted. Then, yeah, and then we were, like got him checked up at the vet, and then we got him like fixed. He wasn't fixed yet. Oh yeah. And then once yeah. you've dripped, dropped, <laughs> once we've dropped all that money, and then you're like, and then after like too many nights where you're watching TV or on the laptop, and he's just kind of like curls up on your lap. Yeah. He but, was like, I guess this is my cat. But now. he does do that. But he also will just sometimes play attack you, which is his favorite game because he's funny. still a kitten and he didn't grow up with people. He or he grew, he was on the streets for too long, <laughs> so he's like a foster kid with problems. You know, he's a loving kid, <laughs> foster kid, but he's like, you know, he's some mistreated. behaviors because right because of it's, his treatment. It's honestly like. You know the old Pink Panther films? It's like living with Kato. It's like... Oh, I don't know. The, I mean, I know like, them, but I don't think I've seen he them. He hides in the darkness. Hilarious. And, like, leaps out at you from nowhere. And they think it's funny. But doesn't even attack you. Like He'll, like, leap out at you, grab you, and go, like, all right, done it now, and then run off into the di- darkness again. <laughs> 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 all right, that was a win. And that's just... I As I've witnessed myself, like, whoever said, I think that is just cute. Behavior. It is I don't behavior. know if there's anything he's gonna grow but out he'll, of. He'll also like sort of bite you and hang on. We've had him. He, we had his nails trimmed the other day, so it's less. But like, look, you can see all these are like marks there on yes. my arm, like there. That's from about a week ago. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you woke up the other night in the middle of the night, and the cat had a knife to your throat. Right. What? Are you, how are you? Don't even have thumbs. But then you take the knife off him, and then he just nuzzles up against you and falls asleep you're on your like, lap, purring. And you're like, it. all right, I love this guy. Uh, it is an abusive relationship. Yeah. Also, you can't negatively reinforce cats. Cats don't respond to negative reinforcement. This is something I've discovered. Like, dogs respond to positive and negative reinforcement. Okay, yeah. like you can tr- give them treats when they're doing good things, but yeah. also you can, like, you can berate them or, like, spray them and with a squirty shame. bottle, and then they'll go, like, oh, yeah. I shouldn't do that again. Cats Whereas don't. cats, they respond to positive reinforcement, but if you, like, you know, tell them off or spray them with a spray bottle, which people think you're meant to do to get them off services, yeah, yeah. they just go, like, well, that... Why is, be he, angrier. why is he being an asshole today? Yeah. I don't like this guy today. He's being a prick. I'm just gonna walk over here for a bit, and then when the pricks left, I'll just I'll just go back I'll to my do table. The same thing <laughs> again. Because I was enjoying chewing through these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> they are delicious. Um, that is sociopathic behavior. Holly read somewhere that uh, the cats respond more to lower tones. So, again, this is something I find endlessly funny because I'll be in the other room and I'll just suddenly hear, <laughs> hear, hear Holly, who normally speaks in a relatively high register, just yeah. being like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> And I know I should like help her or something, but it's very, very funny. First of all, just in general, uh, you know, we've heard that uh, <laughs> that people respond to deeper tones. Like, yep. did you ever watch that documentary? What's her name? Elizabeth Holmes. Oh yeah, where she's like trained her voice to be kind of. That's why she did it. Right. Because people take se- deeper voices more seriously. That's the chick. If you guys didn't the, watch, the, what was it called? Theranos is the name of the company. Theranos I can't is the remember name of the, the company. I can't remember the name of the documentary, but it's on HBO. It's all about like she was running basically a fake blood testing startup that it raised was like, billions. It was like the fire fest of the medical industry. Right. Um, all this hype. People invested millions of dollars into it, into this company that had no like there was no legs. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they were claiming to be able to do blood tests like rather than doing like a big blood draw with just like a, dr- a p- finger prick. More and, efficiently. Yeah. Using like nanotechnology. And it was all bullshit. And it was none of it was um, true. Margaret Thatcher also trained her voice to be deeper. Be deeper. Yeah. She went to like voice coaching. If you watch. Yeah. If you look at recordings, if you listen to her voice like early when she was just a new member of parliament, it's much higher. Yeah, it's higher and sort of squeakier. And then when you see her like as prime minister in the eighties, she it's, sounds she's... like James Earl Jones. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and it was for exactly that same reason. It actually is. I think it is her in the latest Star Wars films. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch the end credits now. It's, it's very. Uh, <laughs> That's, or, it's a, it, I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, but I was just go- I, the whole voice thing is. Oh, it's very funny. Like, yeah, I, I also, uh, he's obsessed with the toilet that uh, we had to. Holly left the lid up. I yeah. He plays in morning. the water. He tries to get in. She, like uh, this morning, Holly came back from yoga and was like, "Why is his why are his pores blue?" I was like, "Oh, because you left the toilet lid up, and he's got into the disinfectant, <laughs> and then, like we had to like wash it off him before he started licking it." It's. I I uh, I accidentally peed on him two days ago. Because <laughs> he just jumped on the toilet? Because I, yeah, I, uh, like, I forgot to completely shut the door. I was home alone, and I thought I, I thought the door was shut enough, but it wasn't. <laughs> and he's very quick. And he just, I was standing up, as is my want. Of course. As is, as is it. One you mean of my, you don't pee? You don't sit down when you One of my pee? favorite ways to pee is standing up. <laughs> and he just, and I guess I had my legs slightly <laughs> apart, just for stability. Yeah. And he just... Suddenly, there was like a cat up through my legs. Like he leapt just through my legs. Through 
desperately launching himself at the toilet, I had to like stop mid spray, <laughs> like midstream, like with one hand sort of direct and the other hand like trying to grab him out of the toilet. He came up behind you. He came up behind through your legs. Through the legs. So just suddenly. And almost went into the bowl. Pretty much. Or he did like get into the bowl. I just got him shy of the water, but I didn't avoid him getting a splash. See, that. So now I peed on my cat. That's you peed on the cat. <laughs> and just... that to me is such a nightmare because I, I, one of my, I'm like a germaphobe. Not yeah. like well, to the point where I need to go to therapy. Maybe I do. <laughs> now that I'm thinking, but maybe I should go to therapy. But like even the thought of an animal just jumping into a toilet. <laughs> And what? then running around your house and then like running on your couch. They're on and your couch. It Suddenly I would throw everything away. <laughs> I would throw my couch. My new couch would be on the side of the it'd be on the curb. I just can't <laughs> I can't did you ever do you watch Seinfeld ever? Uh yeah. There was an episode because I feel like I'm similar to him in this, in my neuroses, but there was he was dating a chick and he dropped her toothbrush in the toilet. Right. And before he could tell her she was using it in uh, her mouth. And then he couldn't. And then he told her what he did finally after she already brushed her teeth and then she wanted to get revenge. And so she put something of his in the toilet but didn't tell him what it was. <laughs> so he was walking around. He just threw everything out. He was like, oh, no, it could be these glasses. It could be. So he just got new everything. And then she finally told him, oh, it was. I just used the toilet brush. So he just was neurotic and threw everything out for no reason. But that's me. Like, yep. I can't. I even get grossed out when I see people in, movie, in movies touching toilets. Like when they vomit and they're just leaning all on the toilet. I'm just, I am I have to like, yeah, like throw your I arms out. Yeah, your arms no, are you, done now. Everything. Whenever my shoe or like my pant leg hits a public toilet, I'm like, I got to throw these out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like stepping with my shoes. I don't like right. stepping with my shoes on the floor in the bathroom. And I see people with their shoes in their beds. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't. I uh, can't. People are psychopaths. Anyway. Back so to yeah. your cat. So, yeah. So, your cat's I, in the toilet. The cat's in the toilet. So, that's 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 one mini struggle. Yes. Um, so, but wait. So, and there's, can you, can you train cats? You can to an extent, yeah. You can train them. And also, he's still a kitten. So, apparently, he will get less okay. excitable. Right. As he matures. Yeah. But. Still be an asshole. He still will be he an asshole. He just might slow down with trying to jump in the toilet. But a very lovable asshole. Okay. But. I want to see a picture when we're done. I will show you a picture. He's a tuxedo cat, mid hair tuxedo cat for your non yeah. I don't even know what video that means. listeners. Is that just black and white? Yeah, black and white, but it looks kind of like a, like he's wearing a tux. He's wearing a bow tie. Like he's got a kind of I yeah. Think I have an image of what that is. Yeah, he's like mostly black, but he's got like white paws and like a white little chest section. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> and, a, and a little bit of white on his nose, on so like his nose. He's formal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's a formal cat. I had a cat living with one time for twenty years, or he was twenty year old living with me, and it was the wor- it was the worst thing. Well, really, old cats have their own. They, they've got their own like roster of problems. They've got a oh, whole. He was throwing up everywhere. Yep. Yeah, and it, I, he's he's gonna outlive all of us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that cat. Are gonna, we still going? I have no idea. This was my roommate that I kicked out over a year ago, and that was one of the reasons why I kicked him out is because he had a cat. It was his mom's cat that was staying with us because she was moving. Right. And he was throwing up everywhere, and my roommate was not cleaning it up. Oh, that's uh, no. Uh, okay. Like he, I would have to tell him there is vomit. And it's like, you could see it be like outside of his bedroom. And he just yeah, wouldn't see it. Yeah, because that's instantly, that was one of my problems anyway. Like, this guy hasn't, like, vomited yet and isn't a vomiter so far. Yeah, no, and hopefully, because he's hopefully so Hopefully that'll continue, that, yeah. Right. But, uh, but, you know, you still have to come to terms with, and this has always been my problem with cats, like, having a tra- tray of shit in your house. It's gross. Because that's what yeah. you deal with with a cat. You t- They shit in the and house. You and you smell it, like, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, every t- every person I know that has a cat, I'm like, you have a cat as soon as I walk in the door. Because you can smell it. You yeah. can smell litter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. There has to be a better way. But he is adorable. I know. It's like you love it now. It's like I know. It's it's like that's the horrible kids. thing. It's like, I'm fucking stuck with this thing now. Because uh, I have feelings for it. Because at first I was like, oh, God, Holly loves this cat now. And I'm stuck with it because I don't want her to be sad when we yeah. get rid of it. And then yeah. I, and then when we went away to London... Uh, over Christmas, mm-hmm. I was like, I really miss him. See, I know. Aww, like I miss him attacking us in the morning. And you're gonna be a great dad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you have? You have another. You said you had a, that was a mild struggle. Well, well, we're also we're getting married in September. Yes, yes. Which awesome, love it a bit. But yeah. planning a wedding is a hundred percent a struggle. I've. You're, I've not had anyone. I had one person. Do you know Natasha Pearl Hansen? 
I know, yeah, not well, but yeah. She came on a while ago. We were at uh, Big Sky Festival, and I podcasted out there, and she's been engaged for like eight years. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if I'm exaggerating, but for a long time. And right. yeah, the planning of it. So you're the only other person who's who's come on who's going through this process. So I would like to, yes, let's yeah, talk about it. Yeah, we did it pretty, I, you know, we, we got engaged. I think we, we got it. It'll be just over a year's worth of engagement by the time we get married. That's a good time. I think that's a reasonable. That's a, that's, I think that's normal. I think that is relatively normal. Yeah, because it takes so long for the planning of it. Like, that takes, and it's, what, like six months or so, if not more? Yeah, it's it's endless. And I, I also hate planning. In general. I, I hate producing. <laughs> like, like you know, it, it bless God bless people who are both good at and enjoy producing, both yeah. by putting on live shows and producing yeah. TV and it's film and everything. Bless them for being good at it and enjoying yeah. that task because I hate it. I've I run comedy it. shows a handful of times. Uh, once when I was pretty new, just, you know, as you do when you start off, you sort of run, quite often run your own comedy show. Because you have to, to. You need stage time. Exactly. It's a way to get stage time. And, and a way to meet people. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, interact with people who are higher up the chain than you because they're, like, they suddenly want to work. Right. Um... And then for a while, I was helping produce this show, Set List. Oh, yeah. I remember that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is still going. It still does, like, festivals and does shows around L.A., but they also did, for a while, they were doing Edinburgh Festival runs. I think, actually, they still are, but other people run it now. It's a terrifying show. It's it's terrifying, but I love it. It's, it forces you to just get better. Yeah, it's an improvisational stand-up show. Like, the, the, the idea of the show is you get your set list projected on the screen behind you but yeah. it isn't it's just like random fra- weird phrases and you have to make it and you have to pretend that's what your set list is yeah. and just start riffing yeah and so i helped them troy conrad started the show yeah, and then yeah. paul provenza teamed up with him and i helped them take it to the edinburgh festival nice, and then there was yeah. like a tv show they did of it in the uk and australia oh nice i didn't and, know that that's yeah great. it was really it was really fun but you know i just i, I don't like producing it's a lot of work it's a lot of pro- work and it's a lot of logistics and it's all the kind of stuff i'm bad at like, it's all, like, it feels like having to do your tax returns every day. Every day. It's it is. like, oh, the worst part of this industry is admin and... All the stuff that happens behind the scenes. Organization. None of you guys see because you see the end result, which is all the performances and yeah. whatever. And you're like, oh, this is hilarious. Do you know how much work it took and to by make the way, this run properly as a machine? And we also have to... You know what also sucks? In this industry, we have to do more admin than people whose job is admin. Oh, for sure. Like, what's ridiculous is artists <laughs> and performers. <laughs> it's so true. I never even who, thought about that. Most of us have ended up in this kind of field, partly because it's stuff we are good at and, or, and enjoy, but yeah. also because we are really bad at, like, the normal life stuff. Right, going to jobs and working yeah, and having you know, day jobs. The number yeah. of comics who are dyslexic or oh, fuck-ups or, like, dropped out of school. Mentally challenged. Or, like, went did go to college but for something <laughs> really weird. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's a, it's a group of various <laughs> ADD. Yeah, all over the place. And yeah. I definitely, yeah, I definitely have that going on. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sort of leave the room in the middle of a conversation without realizing I've done it. And then people are like, did you not? Did you, did you, we were talking. And then I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no. Oh, and then, and then yeah. like, come back to the conversation we were having two hours earlier. And they're like, yeah. how is, what's you, what? Uh, no, I'm the same way. But, yeah. um, but. If you if you work like a nine to five, you just get like one tax form that's like, hey, is this how much you earn for the year? Yeah. Yep. And this is how much you, they took out for tax. Yep. Yeah. And you're like, and it's like three minutes on. Yeah. On like some free accounting software, and right. then you're pretty much done. Right. Whereas we're like, all right, how many states did you do shows in this year? It's so tedious. And yeah. Annoying. Like, uh, you got like different tax returns for every different state Everything. you do shows in, and then like, and like Canada. So- like, what am I supposed to do with Canada? Right. And I, yeah, exactly. And I've got UK stuff as yeah, well. And right. they, there's some like complicated formula that connects the two. We got to do all that. So, <laughs> right now, I'm doing a version of that, but for love. For love. <laughs> like so totally it's, worth it. It's just like right, right now, sitting in on my inbox, like undealt with right now, is a. Is a contract from a hotel for like a room block. Yeah. Like uh and then a contract from the band that we have to look over and go back and to the like, changes. I don't and, do this. Yeah, and there's deposits and then like the money you're, you're like, do we really need a band? <laughs> right. Can we just have a DJ? And it is like uh, and I kind you sort of you start thinking like, oh do we need it? But also 
that is one of those things. Like, I think live, I, we both like going to live music in general. Of that course, is something yeah. that we enjoy as yeah. couples going to it as often as we can. So having a live band that's good is something that I think it would mean a lot to us at a wedding. So you're like, okay, right, we'll have the, and we found a band that we really like. Uh, Flowers, like, uh, that's one where I couldn't really care yeah, about like, them. Like, you Holly likes this. flower, but, but, but you handle this doesn't work because it turns out I have far more opinions on things than I thought I did. <laughs> so you do have an opinion on the flowers. I really do. Like, and I was like, because it starts happening. I'm like, oh, you organize this shit. Like, I don't care what, I don't, I don't care what color the napkins are. And then she starts picking stuff and then it turns out I really do and care like, what color the napkins disgusting. are. Yeah, I'm like, I have really, st- I, I found out I have opinions on things I had no idea, no idea. I would ever care about. Uh, like, she was hilarious. looking at flower arrangements and I was like, well, that's way too big to be holding because that looks like you've just stolen a funeral wreath. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just... <laughs> now, first of all, this is a bit. If you have not done this on stage, you I've, should. I've it's started funny. talking a bit about it on stage, yeah. but not. I haven't started talking about this stuff, but because uh, this is really funny. Like you just not having, you not had no idea that you had opinions <laughs> on things. <laughs> I probably very funny. should. Like it just, yeah, because I I really do. Like I really started caring about, uh, like, st- like we were looking at venue. We're getting married in Colorado because that's where she's from. That's where her family okay, is. Okay, yeah. And we, but also that's another organizational logistical nightmare because. Firstly, we don't live in Colorado, so we're organizing something semi-remote. But also, right. so her family's in Colorado. My family is mostly in London, but also in some other places. Uh-huh. And a large and our friends are split between the UK and mostly Los Angeles, That's what... out of America. So, like, wherever we did the wedding, it would be a destination wedding for about two thirds of the crowd. Or most of the people. Yeah, exactly. There's no one place that makes sense. It's really for everyone. So you're organizing people coming in and then you're like well i kind of want to just let people sort their own thing out but also you want to give them guidelines and it uh i i nixed one venue which was really nice that she really liked because it it looked too much like a particular restaurant chain in the uk like hilarious like there's this place in in colorado just outside denver (laughs) that's on like up in the foothills it's up it's gorgeous yeah uh it's like it's in this beautiful grounds. It's called Betcher Mansion. Okay. Uh, there's this guy called something Betcher uh-huh. who has various things all over Colorado with his name on it. He's clearly like one of these guys who did a lot of good in Colorado because at some point he did a lot of bad somewhere else in the world. And this is how he gives back. It's like, all this right. This is you, how he tries to go to heaven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like you, you maybe didn't have slaves because you're a little bit after that, but you had like the equivalent of slaves somewhere. Like so, <laughs> something bad happened for you to suddenly have you this much money. Probably had some indentured servants. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you, you definitely gave a lot of people work, but they didn't have much control over that right. work. So, but there's it. So there's a, it. It's a popular wedding destination. It's on the hills, and I looked at it, and, I, and we visited it, and we looked around. I was like, it look, it, it's the grounds are really nice, and the rooms are nice, but just outside it. Kind of looks like a harvester, and what? And harvester is like a that's the rest the restaurant you were talking about. It's like a restaurant chain that's all chain. over. Yeah, like a sort of Red Robin or hilarious or uh, and that's why you vetoed it. Yeah, exactly. You, well, you are having people from back the, home come, so they would also probably think that. I was gonna say if it was just people in the U.S., they would have no idea what you're talking. No, about. No, 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 exactly. But uh, you're having, but also just looking at it from me, I was like, it just looks like, uh. Yeah, if I, well, it, or like a Cracker Barrel kind of like it's like that sort of equivalent cracker chain. Cracker Barrel vibe, <laughs> but no, but it, it doesn't look like that. But it's like the equivalent of what that is in the in UK. The, the, that is what is okay. A harvester. Yeah, exactly. And it, you know, just like one of these restaurants that's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you can't get married there. Because what it is is like they design this building to have like a sort of old English vibe, but yeah, that's yeah. also what Harvester does with this restaurant. <laughs> So I just looked at it. It was like this building is doing like Brit face, like it's pretending to pretending be. Pretending to be. <laughs> it's pretending to you be English. You couldn't accept it. And I was looking at it. I was like, oh, yeah. I just... And she really loved it. She. It was one of her favorites. It was definitely at the top of the short list. And I just, I was like, oh, I'm really sorry, but like, I can't. It just every time I see it now. And to be fair, she told that story to my family when we were over at Christmas. Hilarious. And and now they hate you. Both my sister and my mum were like, oh, it does look He's a bit right. like a harvester. <laughs> <laughs> he is right. <laughs> <laughs> so have you guys 
decided on a location. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a, we've got our venue. We've got yeah, we've we, we, the deposits down, and it's like you know, it's all. Does she like it better than that place, the new place, or think, is she I think, just deal, tolerating it? No, because... I think she does like the venue. Okay, that's good. I I I think that place was still the top of her list, okay. but you know, we had like. <laughs> We both had our favorites list, and this was definitely one of the ones where it overlapped, where we were like, we're both good with this venue. Yeah, yeah. she can have her second wedding there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And you know, I will, because when it's not my wedding, I'm fine with it, so I will go to that second wedding, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. will Yeah, and you will support. And I will. <laughs> as long as this tacky establishment is not attached to my wedding, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> And again, by the way, if anyone here listening happens to be involved in Betcha Mansion, lovely venue. It uh, It's genuinely gorgeous, and the grounds are beautiful. <laughs> I just couldn't get over this. This It just looked like a... Th- it you, looked like a knockoff, like the a hand-me-down version of yeah, what the actual... You know, like when, when people have kids, and, and someone was like, we can't, I'm sorry, I know you love this name, but that was the name of my school bully. Absolutely. Or this, or this person that I hated at school. Absolutely. It's kind of like it's that. that. It's like, I, I mean, like, I don't have bad experiences of harvesters, but it's the same thing. It's like this weird association that I have yeah. with this appearance. Yeah, you just don't want it to represent you. That's all. The, yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> and to have memories attached to, yeah, you're going to have photos taken there. You're going to be all around your house. And yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. I get it. The band, so the band, it, what is it? Uh, it's an L.A. band? No, it's a, it's a Colorado, Colorado band. Okay, so I was going to ask about travel. for You have to pay for travel for them and stuff? No, they're, uh, although they are from a little out of town. They're, they're, it's a bluegrass band because mm-hmm. we're, like, we're going to like leaning into the fact that we're doing Colorado wedding. Are they bluegrass there? I know nothing about Yeah, they got blue. They got a big bluegrass okay. thing going on there. So Because uh, also they're up. The band isn't from Denver. They're, like, up in the mountains. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Denver's nice. Oh, yeah. Like, the whole of Colorado, it's, it's really gorgeous. And we were deciding... That was... Uh, oh, there's allergies. Allergies. I know. Uh, but we were deciding between doing L.A. and Colorado. Yeah. And there was an L.A. venue we really liked, but we just, in the end, decided, like... I, when I was talking about it to various friends and family and people about the wedding like so many of my family loads of the Brits were like do it in Colorado yeah I think they were just more excited Some, of, a lot of them have been to LA yeah 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 and just the idea of like Colorado in the mountains just kind of made them more like oh this is cool of course you yeah, know it's gorgeous there do you get are you a person that gets affected by the altitude stuff uh you uh, seem like you would a little bit thank you <laughs> <laughs> you seem like you have a feeble constitution we opened up talking about your allergy you test, and now you're getting tested. If you can't even handle a goat, how are you going to handle 10,000 feet and above? <laughs> uh, I, we are telling, like, I, I, we are, t- like, on the invitation, we're advising our friends t- who are coming in from the UK, mm-hmm. and even the friends who are coming in from LA, but, like, we're advising the UK people. Come in at least a day or two early because they can have adjusted. jet lag as well. Yeah, that's bad. And we're also saying on the wedding like invitation, yeah, drink more water than you think you need to, and bring some drink Advil. Right, drink less alcohol than you think you need to. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah, people will get drunker and more dehydrated. Yeah, quicker than very they... quickly. I didn't. Uh, yeah, and I don't want our wedding guests to be asleep by nine. Oh no, of course that's terrible. Yeah, no. Uh, what's the longest amount of time that you've spent? At that altitude, like, have you been in Denver for like a week? Oh yeah, yeah, like, cause we visit her family all the time, so we've. Oh okay, okay, yeah, no, I was out there for High Plains Festival. Oh yeah, cool. I did that, and it did affect me. Not like it really does, and you don't think it will, cause Denver doesn't feel like you're up in the mountains. It for sure doesn't. Um, but like, cause you you're also looking at the mountains, and you're like, no, there's the those mountains. Are the mountains. I'm on ground. I'm, I'm, I'm on, on the low the... flat. Yeah, I'm in a plane. I'm in the. <laughs> I'm at the base of the mountains, but you don't realize like the base of the mountains still it's starts. It's still a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and the, I will say the turbulence that I experienced flying into Denver yep. was terrifying. Like you're just like, we're gonna, we're not gonna land. Yeah. They, <laughs> you, the winds in the mountains are ridiculous. Yeah, it's a very oh, it's a mile high airport, and yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. And also, I I didn't realize because there were people there that were getting like nauseous. At right. the festival. I didn't, and it didn't set in for me probably until maybe day three, but I started getting a bunch of headaches. And I was like, I think, and it didn't, I didn't, yeah, it didn't probably, even dawn on me. It's probably because you were drinking less water than you needed to as well. Yeah, right. When you're traveling, you don't drink as much water. I never yeah. did the, uh, there was the Aspen Festival. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never did that either. Yeah. Because that's much higher up, because that's actually in higher. The, yeah. That's actually in the ski resorts, right? And uh, that one, apparently, they did, used to have like little, you know, you can buy those, like, mini oxygen tanks just to give you an oxygen boost? Oh, yeah. 
Maybe they had guys... a few of those dotted around backstage that, in case like people needed a, I think we'll be fine. Like it's it's not. No, you should put those in the wedding thing. What are they called? Like the party favors. Yeah, the, the party <laughs> just <laughs> oxygen tanks. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just like we're not doing Everest. I mean, come. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your Sherpa. Yeah, there you go. Everybody gets a Sherpa. Yeah. An oxygen tank. Um, oh, <laughs> that was very distracting. <laughs> Paul just let me know how much time we have left. <laughs> but, and I was supposed to pretend like I didn't see it. But, but I did they the sort of like opposite. walking behind the camera and then holding up a whiteboard with 50 <laughs> written on it. <laughs> very discreet. Now, you have never... How long have you guys been dating? Uh, about four and a half, getting on five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we've been together a while. So this is real. <laughs> yeah, I think this one's going to stick. This one? <laughs> <laughs> and I met her. Is she also in comedy? I don't know her very well. We met at yeah. the comedy store yeah, that she, one night. Um, she is in comedy, but she's on the other side of the business. So she doesn't perform. She, she's she been various things in the time we've been dating. Yeah, she, yeah. But she was a... She was a network exec. She worked in development oh, nice. at TBS. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then she was a talent agent for a bit at Innovative. And oh, okay. Yeah, so she's it's it's kind of cool because she knows the industry and she knows the people and she knows how it works. But also but we're not... she's not trying to be famous. We're not doing the same thing. She's not competing. And like, yeah, we kind of... There's a sort of, you know, there's a, there's a balance. Yeah, no, that's the worst. Well, I'm, I'm happy you guys found I, each other. Yeah. Like, I know people who are... We both know, like, husband and wife performer yeah, yeah, duos, yeah. and that's cool. And it, they, they make it work, and it's great. But For sure. I think, I, think that, I think it's nice that we have different neuroses. Well, of course. You can't have the same ones. Yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> like, would be a nightmare. And the cat? No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the cat? Um, oh, wait. Oh, so what would you say for the, for the wedding planning? What is your biggest, what's been the most annoying thing that you've had to do as far as duties planning for the wedding? What's been the bane of your existence? Oh, I don't, the hotel so far. What, what's wrong with the hotel? The planning? hotels because it's a logistical nightmare and also one of the hotels that we, so it was like this sort of 10 room sort of guest house, bed and breakfast kind of place in the town we're getting married in. Yeah. And we're like, we were talking to them about buying out that whole hotel. Okay. Oh, wow. Because that's... Y'all are balling. No. I mean, not like, not with our own money, but like... <laughs> like the our wedding... parents, my yeah. parents. Yeah. Exactly. Like we were talking about like our, our wedding party taking over the whole hotel. Yeah. Because also I've got my sister has a two-year-old daughter, or she will be two by the time of the wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's organizing that. And they were like, you can't have kids in there unless you have the whole building because it's an old building in the... Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So we were like, well, we'll take over the whole building. And we were emailing backwards and forwards about how much that would be for like three or four nights for the whole building. Mm -hmm. And then we got an email like two days ago going, uh, so I'm really sorry about this, but... Um, oh, no. So the person you were talking to quit a couple of weeks ago, uh, uh, but didn't put in the room block properly. Uh, and we've sold five of the rooms already for uh, that weekend. So... So that was, and also like my parents are like, my, like my family are justifiably, by the way, but like they're constantly, they're on at me about like, where are we going to stay? What are we going to do? Yeah. Because they're also people who plan stuff nine months out. Like they book vacations yeah. like a year out because well, that's yeah. what normal people with we'll normal do, jobs right. do, particularly if it's on a different continent. They're like, whereas. We need to plan this. Yeah. yeah. You, you know how we travel. Like we'll get a gig. Like oh, We'll hey, find out we have a gig tomorrow. They'll be like, hey, do you want to be in Fort Lauderdale on Wednesday? And they'll be Ukraine. like, oh, I'll just check my. F yeah, sure. exactly. <laughs> and then you'd like check sure. the flights and go like, I guess, yeah, I guess I can find a flight that will make that worthwhile. <laughs> yeah, do it. There, yeah, screw it, do it. And, right. I, and then just put me in any non-murder hotel. And I'm fine. And we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not a hotel that has recently had a murder yeah. or is suspected to soon have a murder. Correct. Then I'm okay then with that. Then we're good. And so, yeah, and you're like, you've got your travel bag ready to go. Yeah, yeah. This is like, you're, you know, you're, you can, I can be, I can be on an international flight like an hour after finding out that I'm meant to be on that oh, international flight. This for is just sure. A, it's just the um, lifestyle, yeah. Whereas people with normal lives are like, no, they we need. have to like book time off work and organize stuff. And also we don't want to fly from London to Colorado yeah. without knowing a for sure that we have a place stay. to stay that can also accommodate a baby. Right. Uh, so, I need an itinerary. So I've got, I'm need getting receipts. like, exactly. Yeah. So I'm getting like messages from them going like, what's happening with this guest house? And we haven't heard anything. We're going backwards and forwards with this people. Yeah. And then we suddenly get this like, oh, my bad. We've just, uh, so we've accidentally sold it to. That's a nightmare. Yeah. And That's... then, and then we were like, 
well, we could st- you could still take over the five rooms. And we're like, well, what about the baby? And I'm like, well, there are two rooms that are kind of separate from the building. So if you could, if you had both of those rooms, it would be okay. But because you could put that baby in one of those and the noise wouldn't bleed. <laughs> oh, but no, currently there is someone who's booked the room below that. So I'll, we'll message her and find out if she's okay to move to a different room. And I was like, well, is the different room the same as the room she's booked? And they're like, yeah, it is, but it's uh, it's has a smaller bed and it's the There's same price. There's a bear in that room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you talking so about? So you're like, it's a smaller, <laughs> it, it's a smaller and worse room, but the same price. And you're gonna ask someone for if for no reason she's willing to do this, right? Uh, and then she, we got an email back like an hour later, going like, yeah, she insane. said she wasn't up for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even have to ask her. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Preposterous. So now we're organizing all of that kind of stuff, and they're like, <laughs> and then I was looking up Airbnbs because there are like these big guest houses around that area. Yeah, because you know for like the ski people and the holiday, it's a you know, holiday area. Right. Um, so I'm like, well, here's a ten, here's a, like a five bedroom Airbnb that would accommodate everyone, and yeah. they're like, yeah, but we don't trust Airbnb, kind of semi justifiably because they can yeah. cancel on you at short notice. Oh. Uh, so annoying. So yeah. they're much like they're much more like, no, I want to, I want a hotel room that'll definitely be okay. Right. Right. So it's just, it's trying to juggle parents who are semi-justifiably neurotic. Yeah, yeah. Like neurotic, but also with, to an extent, with, cause. With cause, for sure. I get al- it. But also neurotic. Yeah. Uh, and and then, you know, the stuff in Denver, and then we haven't even got on to, like, you know, Holly's parents starting to get involved. Because, uh, again, my, like, my mom and Holly's mom are very similar people. They're both... They're both teachers, mm-hmm. so they Very really hands-on. they really like organizing people. <laughs> <laughs> that micromanaging. Yeah, yeah. like it, and, like I'm very lucky that I, I get on really well with her family, that's... and she gets on really well with my family, and everyone loves each other, and that's yeah. awesome. But like both of our moms are people who like like to explain things, yeah. and like to organize things, yeah. You know, but it, which it, is a good thing, but it, also a bad thing. It's a it's, lovely thing. If there's too many sh- and chefs in the kitchen, exactly. And what we need to do like, really is just like find the right jobs for both of right the families to do. That's the ideal. Because thing if to do. yeah, if if her mum has like, because also she's really excited about the fact everyone's coming to Colorado. Yeah. Because she's like, oh, we get to show off Colorado. Yeah, now. yeah. But we need to sort of give them a few specific jobs. I've learned from also talking to other people who got married. We need to give them a few specific jobs. Yeah. Um, that. Because so if because they'll do it amazingly and like they'll be a great, we need to find the right way to make our families be help helpful. Basically, <laughs> that's smart. I though. think I think that's what I've learned is like you need to go like because if you give them a task, they will do it because they're both the types of families who are like, yeah. oh yeah, we want to help and we want to get involved. Yeah, but we need to make sure they're not step doing the things that we're also doing and right. getting on top we of We want to make sure that we're, we're being productive about it and not wasting time. Yeah, we don't want to like find out that we've ordered a caterer and they're like, oh, but we we've also ordered... We've already order- done that <laughs> like, why did you it's do not that? what we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've ordered the party clown. That's for a kid. That's, <laughs> that's, not... for, that's for a five-year-old. What did you just do? <laughs> I, okay, so we have to wrap this up, but I want to ask you two questions. Yes. After now being in this process for how long have you been planning the wedding now? Well, we started... We started looking in earnest around, when was it we first went to Colorado to look at the venues? I think we looked, I think October, I think, was when we started looking at venues. Okay. We started okay. kind of like earnestly looking at. Right. So we're, we're about three, four months in. I think we're doing all right on, on the itinerary. The timeline. Like of we've, got, we've got the venue booked. We've got, uh, the fla- we've got the florist. We've got the band. We've That's sort of got the start. hotels. Yeah. Like, I think we're solid. You know, and then uh, uh, then uh, the one I'm really dreading is like the invite list because we've started telling like the people we definitely want there, but then you start like going, oh, I can't invite. Well, it starts becoming like a juggling act. They're like, I really would love these people to be here, but then you can't invite these two people and not also these six people because right. they're the same level of friends. Right. And then and then you start, but then that's eight people, and then eight people is this much more money. Money. And then you, right. if you have these eight people, then you can't not. Ha- it just, yeah, no, yeah. that's that's. So that's really going to be uncomfortable, like having to draw weird right. lines around friends. Right. Like at the beginning, you're like, "Fuck, I hope all these people can come." And then the longer in the process, you're, you're like, like "Oh, I can't even invite them." Then you like, don't want to come. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you start kind of going like, at the beginning, you're like, God, "I wouldn't be a wedding if these people aren't here." And then after a while, you're like, "I really they hope they say no." <laughs> I, I hope. I hope oh. someone has a pregnancy we don't know about yet, and they're like, "I'm sorry, but I'll be eight and three quarter months." 
like I'll be like a week away from my due date then, and right. I can't fly to a different right. country. And you Please, go, God. And you go like, I'm so sorry that you can't make it, and you'll be here in spirit, and we love you dearly. And inside, you're like, fuck yes. Yeah, right. You're like secretly like, yes. The universe works. Yeah. In our so favor. we haven't we haven't even got to that point yet. I but. have a solution for you. Yes. Just stop being friends with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> Find out who you can't invite, and then just end the friendship. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Maybe three months before the wedding, and we were warned as well by a, a Brit friend who now lives in Colorado. Uh-huh. Uh We we were because they they were like, yeah, we were expecting like a sort of one third attrition rate uh-huh. on our estimation of yeah. who would come over because people flying over from another country. For, and that's a lot, right? Out of state, and they were like, but we underestimated the fact that it's a holiday destination. Oh, like it, it like Colorado is like a vacation spot. And <laughs> we were so gonna we, go there anyway. So yeah, we sort of. <laughs> They're like, we kind of underestimate, and they had far more yeses than they were accounting for. Hilarious. Okay, so now I'm going to make it one question. Go for it. Because that kind of touched on what I was going to ask. But it, damn, which one do I want to ask? If you were, no, no, I don't want to, I'll do this one. What's, What's advice that you would give to people who are, List my listeners who are pl- also about to plan a wedding. What's one word of advice you would give them to make their thing, their whole journey, a little bit easier? Uh, you know what? I, we have someone who came with the venue who is so the the venue we've got outsources like a wedding planner. Yeah, so we've got like a semi wedding planner. Okay, and we were also giving her a bit more money to cover some of the things that aren't. She she was already kind of. She's like, no, I will organize everything that's in the venue, mm-hmm. but we're getting married outside near the venue, mm-hmm. uh, so we're sort of paying her a bit more to organize to do some of the other stuff. And she's super organized; like, she's like, that's her job, and she's really good at that's it. That's great, yeah. And I would say, so far, she's been worth every penny, just because she firstly saved us money on stuff, and also she has just just for cortisol levels, yeah, just <laughs> for sheer. <laughs> Like the stress relief of just knowing that there's someone who's on top of these deadlines, who knows what they're doing. Yeah, who's like, no, you ne- by this date you should have this stuff done, and this is the, this is when you need to get the room blocks done, and it's just being on top of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I would, I would say it's worth it. And also, I've also s- on that to similar th- on that same kind of note, I've spoken to friends because we were gonna do venues where you just sort of hire the venue and then you sort of organize everything a la carte separately. Yeah, and then this is more of an all in one. And it's kind of working for, you know, it's, it's less customizable than we would have liked. Yeah. You know, we might have gone for a different caterer rather than the one that, you know, you have to have the chef with that kitchen. Right. Um, but also, I know people who did the everything a la carte because they thought they'd save money. And they're like, it came to, like, within $500 of this all-in-one res- place that we were looking at as well. And <laughs> we spent, like, an extra three months of stress organizing that stuff. Uh... So I'm like, I know everything's expensive, but there are some things that you just go like, you throw money to... at this problem. Right, right. There are certain things that like you can. It's like accounts. I I could do my accounts myself, but I could do I don't my want to. I could do my visa myself. Yeah, that's I, so much a friend time. of mine did her own green card without a lawyer, and she's like, yeah, all the information's online on how to fill it out. I'm like, I'm not that person. I don't trust myself, Me neither. and I won't do it. Yeah, and that is one of those things like taxes, taxes. like immigration and yeah. weddings, where I just go like. There are people who do it for a living, yeah. and they earn their money, and I'm happy just to, to kind of go give like them for peace of mind. We will go out for a few fewer dinners, yeah, and maybe buy not as many nice clothes this for year, sure. for sure, and just have it. have Patricia work it all out yeah. for us. That's what they get paid to do. They're professionals. Yeah. No, I agree 100. percent That's why I'm with also like cleaning my house. I'm just hire somebody because <laughs> I can't. It's right? Because you, you're like. <laughs> Why yeah. would I do this myself when I'm going to half-ass it when there's somebody who wants to do it? Right, and you could be, you know, doing other things that might then earn you money in the meantime. time, for yeah. sure. It's your time. Oh, Matt, this was so fun. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, of course. This was fantastic. Uh, one more time, where can people find you on social media? Oh, they can find me social media, Matt Kirshen, on all the things. I think Instagram has an underscore, but I barely use Instagram. And right. then probably science is my podcast. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did that a long time you ago. Did. So yeah. So maybe start with Candace's episode. So uh, we go through the week in science news with funny people like Candace. I'm trying to even remember. I don't even remember what we talked about. No, no, I. It's I mean, you do it every. Out, yeah. You do it all the time. But, um, yeah. You prob- know. Probably science is the name of that show. Yeah, you guys listen. Also, surprise, Matt's invited all of us to his wedding. That's true. So if you're listening to this, you are a friend. <laughs> and you are invited. But also, I hope that all of you can't make it. 
I hope every one of you has a work commitment or a, a baby or a currently unknown pregnancy or some <laughs> other serious thing that a has a feral cat that might destroy exactly. your apartment that you can't leave alone. <laughs> some but, responsibility. But every friend of mine and everyone I've ever spoken to is invited. <laughs> And that's legally binding because I said it into the camera and microphone of a podcast. On a podcast. That is very important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, thanks for tuning in to The Struggle. Uh, again, if you have not subscribed, make sure you do that. We're on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Rate and review us on iTunes. And tell somebody about The Struggle if you're listening to it regularly. You can find me at Jokes by Candace and CandaceThompsonComedy.com. And watch Lights Out with David Spade. You guys, bye. <laughs>